guys. Welcome to today's show. Happy Wednesday. I hope you are having a fantastic middle of your week. Today, we got a story. I know you guys already read the title. You've seen the thumbnail. This story is insane. Before we get into the treachery, uh, let me introduce Taylor in Nashville. <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, I saw in the chat people are like, this title is insane already, and here we go, let's get into it. Yeah, you guys are feeling it, you already know, uh, so let's get a little bit into this story and just place yourselves in the shoes of this man who we are about to talk about. The headline here says, ex-NBA star Joe Smith will not leave his wife, Keisha Chavez, uh, despite her filming his reaction when he found out that she has a secret OnlyFans account as she insists his He'll come round. Now, oh gosh, guys, I'm 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 flabbergasted. I am astounded, astonished <laughs> by stories like this and how people maintain their strength and composure when something like this happens to them. So the background here is that this ex-NBA star, Joe Smith, uh, got together with this woman. Uh, and now she does have a background of being an adult film star. So keep that in mind. Bear that in mind. Remember that. But he gets with this woman and, you know, she's got a background in singing. She wants to, you know, follow her artistry, all these different things. They come together, they get married, and with marriage, you know, came this expectation that you are no longer an adult film star. You're going to leave that in the past. You're going to, you know, keep that to yourself. But come to find out, she had an OnlyFans that she was operating for over a year. And she'll get into the reasons why she was doing this behind his back. She never alerted him to the fact that this was a thing that she was, she was doing, and now he's he's found out okay so we're gonna watch the video because not only does he find out about the fact that she has an only fans but she decides to film his reaction to it here we go and language warning for those of you who don't want to hear curse words today stupid, yo. i can't believe i'm sitting here just finding out you got an only fans out of all these years you know the disrespect that comes with it that you could even talk to me before you did it that's bullshit yo. that's fucked up keys I'm telling you, that's fucked up. Wait, wait, no, 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 calm, but you're not gonna say fuck me, or that's fucked up, it's not what fucked fuck up. You're calling me, what the fuck you doing? <sighs> Listen, it's not fucked up, and we're going to, up. okay, look, so, I have an OnlyFans page, and he's mad because he's just now finding out about it. Of course I'm mad I'm just finding but out about it. I'm not doing it with anybody but myself, so why should I have to tell you my choice, my body, my body, my fucking choice? I'm your partner, you're supposed to come to me and talk to me. Joe, I've been talking to you about mad things. I've been asking for solutions to shit. You're not giving me none, so I created one. That's no solution. Not in my book. That's no solution. You knew who the fuck I was when you met me. Before. Before. Before, before, yeah, we before, met, yeah, I and knew I that. thought that I would never have to go man, back to anything yeah, I like knew this that again, but unfortunately, no, no, no. that's not the case right after that, now. After that, everything's supposed to change. Oof, okay, fine. First of all, this woman is giving Jada Pinkett Smith a run for her money. If we see Jada back in the news in a few weeks from now and she's pulling some war stuff on Will Smith, <laughs> then she got it from this woman's playbook because she saw everything that was coming out with Jada and thought... I can top that. I could do better than that. Let's go ahead and reveal this OnlyFans to my husband. This is wild. I mean, flabbergasted. I would be speechless if this was happening to me. I mean, the the amount of disrespect is crazy. And I get that some are going to say, you know, he should have known when he signed up for it. If she was an adult film star before, that's exactly what he got now that he's married to her. But you would think, you know with him understanding that background, understanding that about her, if she was even thinking about doing this again, maybe she would go and have a conversation with him first before committing the act of creating an OnlyFans and doing it for a year behind his back. That is wild, but we're gonna keep watching because more unfolds. Everything did change. No, 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 no. Obviously Everything. it hasn't. No, it had to, I had Obviously to do something. It hasn't. You stood out there showing your body. You stood out there doing stuff like this on camera. You act like that's the only thing that I do. I have mad jobs, but they're not facilitating everything that needs to be done. So I got something extra. Only fans be breaking me off. What the fuck? Nah, come on, Keisha, with that. It, it don't matter what they breaking you off. It's the disrespect that comes with it. What you disrespect? Even, you couldn't come and talk to me about it. Okay, well, we're talking about it now. Because I had so, to find out uh -uh. on the fly. All right, then. But now, okay. No, so, wait. I had to find out on the fly. 
So now you know. Oh. <laughs> so now you know. Boy, I would pull a, a magician disappearing act as soon as I heard those words. Well, actually, long before this. Long before this. As soon as you find out about the OnlyFans, this, her stuff is packed. It's out the door. Are you kidding me? And the audacity, the sheer audaciousness of this woman to sit there and say, well, we're talking about it now after he found the secret account. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Yo, how would you guys react in this situation? Let me know in the chat down below how this would go down uh, with you, because to me, this is insane. And, I, you know, I can't even believe I'm saying, well, at least you should have a conversation with him first, when really the reality is she should never be doing this in the first place. But still, with all the acceptance that he's given for you in the relationship for your past, for, you know, what you did back then and still wanting to be in a relationship with you, you go and pull it again. Now, some people are going to say, you know, like, once a 304, always a 304. I don't know if that's necessarily true. If that's necessarily true, I don't know. Uh, but this this is at least a little bit of anecdotal evidence. You really think somebody turns a corner and then they pull this on you. And I, I got to be honest, when I saw this story for the first time, I'm thinking there's no way this is real. And there's still a possibility that it's not. If I were to create an OnlyFans and I wanted to really market that OnlyFans and get it out there to the world, this is the way that I would do it. I would create this whole bit of drama that gets picked up by all these different news sources and fake a social media video of my husband finding out. And then, boom, you're gonna she's going to make millions on, on OnlyFans because people are going to hop on this story. So there's still room for that being the case here. But for now, I'm just going to assume that this is real. And this is this is some psychotic, crazy thing. This is a crazy thing to do to your significant other. This is straight up crazy. Not only are you having this argument and battle over something that you lied about and you were deceitful, uh, you know, in regard to, but you decide to film him. Then you f you take the video and you post it on the internet. This most like vulnerable moment probably between you and him in your entire marriage, and now it's out on the internet for everybody to see. Wild. Yeah, filming it makes me think that's that's her motivation was definitely to market it. At least the motivation for filming. But this woman is a walking red flag. I mean, just having the idea to do this in the first place is a red flag, and then not talking to the husband first and just going ahead and doing it is another red flag. And then having a camera on while he discovers it is another red flag. And then doubling Ugh. down and being like, well, you know, now uh, that's just the red flag on top of all the other red flags. This is just uh, ridiculous. And like you said, audacity on top of audacity. And yeah, I, I never thought I would see a less desirable wife uh, or worse human being as a wife than Jada Pinkett Smith. Uh, but <laughs> this woman is certainly giving her rent for her money. Yeah, no, man, here we go. You know how J. Cole has that song, No Role Models, where he's like, I want that Jada and that will love. He's going to have to change up that lyric, first of all. <laughs> but oh my goodness, does, does she top whatever was going on within that relationship? I mean, some... Some women are just running these men ragged. Uh, and it doesn't stop there, right? Because she gets invited on TMZ Sports to talk about this and what she's done and, you know, the fallout in her, her marriage because of it. And we have that video as well. Let's roll the clip. Yes, the first question is, where's how Joe? Are you, how are you Where, guys doing? Where's Joe? Um, he's pretty pissed off with me. So he's been, um, I think he's at his sister's house. He's not talking to me right now. So... Yeah. Keisha, how long ago, obviously, we saw in the video that Joe was saying he had no idea that you had this account. How long, how long is the account, have you had the page? Um, I've had the page for at least over a year. Um, it's on my Instagram and my LinkedIn, but that's what happens when you don't pay attention to your wife, period. Um, and, you know, he has a friend that, He's been entertaining and she decided that, you know, she wants to really put a wrench, a bigger, you know, wedge in our relationship. So she went digging around my page and was like, oh, do you know that she has this? And I blew it from that. I mean, it's no secret Joe's financial issues, you know, mm -hmm. and I have always made a good life for myself, you know, um, before I met Joe, I was living overseas in Europe. And I had established myself as a singer, you know, and I came back here 
you know, thinking that with his persona and who he was, once we got together and I found out who he was, that it would only take off, you know, other things. Boo, tomato, tomato, tomato. (laughs) Who is she? The only reason I'm like, okay, maybe this is not a skit. Maybe this is actually real. is because she is literally dragging this man through the mud. What man would willingly sign up for his name to be tarnished like this? Not only is she posting this vulnerable moment from their marriage, but she's talking about his finances. She's talking about how she wanted to utilize him for her for his career, which is essentially exactly what she's saying. She thought when I met him as, you know, an ex NBA star, he was my golden ticket, right? I wanted to be a singer. I want to be this, da da da. I'm going to marry him and it's going to take me even further because of his name. So she was already in this like realm of wanting to use him. Now, alternate hypothesis it could be that she fabricated like this whole, you know, social media video, not necessarily fabricated it, but baited him into having these social media posts because she knows I'm done with him. He's not going to take me any further financially. And at least I can get a boost from my, from my only fans in this divorce and in this split. And she doesn't care that she's running his name (laughs) through the mud here. But the audacity to say, I thought I was getting my golden ticket from marrying this man and I didn't get it. So only fans it is i'm still stuck on how did it take him a year to hear about this when it was publicly available apparently in her instagram bio and then the other layer to this that we're finding out about is he had a woman that he was entertaining is the word she used what does that even mean and that's the person that told them this is i mean this is starting to look like just that reality TV that's just like the train wreck you can't look away from. Um, but my goodness, what is going on in this household? Yes, I'm like, are, you, are all your relationships this messy? Let me know. Let me know in the comments down below. Have you ever been in something so messy in your, your life? I do think there's a certain type of person who just feeds on, you know, drama and like just having these incendiary moments in their lives. So they just like... They're like, you know, moths to a flame. That's how that's how these things happen in their lives. And maybe that is what this is. But my goodness, this is peak, peak dysfunction. You know, not everybody's hustle and drive are the same. And depression is a serious thing also. So, you know, I've been just like, you know, supporting and dealing and going through his trials and tribulations with him. Um, I've started several businesses. You know, I've I've been doing a lot like and I just was I just figured out like figure I have a home in Cape Verde. I'm trying not to lose and a a roof over here. We're trying to maintain that we almost got kicked out of. So I just kicked in the drive and did what I had to do, you know, and he won't do it. So I had to. And I'm sorry. You knew I was an adult video star when you met me. So if my survival, if I would do anything for my own survival, then what makes you think that would change now? When I, I love that survival, survival. <laughs> She'll do anything for survival, right? She's got a house here and a house there that she needs to maintain, but she'll do anything for survival. And this type of woman, and I'm not saying like, you know, all the girls who do OnlyFans or whatever. I mean, this type of woman in particular who gets in a relationship and says, I'm going to stop doing what it is that I was doing out of respect for you, out of respect for our relationship and out of respect for, you know, the sanctity of our marriage. And then when it when she goes back to it, goes, well, you knew who I was all along. Didn't I tell you who I was? Didn't you know when you met me? Come on. Now, there is a little bit of responsibility that needs to be taken on behalf of the man's part because, you know, you took the risk, right? When you get into a relationship with somebody and especially one that, you know, evolves into marriage, you have to do your risk versus, you know, benefit calculation and assessment on that relationship. And prior adult filmmaking should be real high up on the list if you're dating somebody who has experience with that. So there is some accountability to be taken on his part, but also she is not a woman of her word. And it's really interesting how, uh, you know, you can easily manipulate the situation and say, well, you knew who I was when you met me. And then that just absolves you of all responsibility when it comes to respect within your marriage. And what's interesting is in the initial video where they're confronting each other and having the conversation, he goes, you couldn't have at least talked to me, which communicates to me that he might have even been open to her, you know, having this conversation or at least exploring the idea. But she wouldn't even come and have the conversation with him 
first, which is just peak disrespect, peak dysfunction. I, I don't ever say this, but she's for the streets. <laughs> she's for the streets. Retired from the adult industry, I promise myself if I don't sing, I don't eat. So when, you know, my music career wasn't popping here when I left Germany and I stayed here for him, I figured, you know, I would, you know, start a business. I started a puppy friend social club business, the dog sitting business, and then COVID happened and that screwed everything up. I have a, a moving company, you know, that he actually works for me. Like he works for my moving company. You know, it, I'm tired of being the one to figure shit out. So I figured it out the best way I know that can maximize the money that needs to come in because I'm tired of living like, you know, I'm tired of living yeah. minimal, you know? It's not, it's not fair. And I don't understand how you could have had such a maximized life and be so content. This is ridiculous. But we've been together for almost 13 years though. We've been together since 2012, like after his retirement. And it really wasn't a retirement that he wanted. It was a forced retirement because he just got locked out after the lockout in the 2011 lockout, you guys remember. Right. You know, he just never got a new job. Nobody wanted him anymore. Oh, so, my gosh. you know, there was a depression and I've been going, you know, dealing with all of this stuff. And I'm sorry, you know, uh, that I, I'm not sorry for what I'm doing. I'm just sorry that he can't understand that it's not, that wasn't a selfish um, decision. <laughs> it was a decision that I made. I made an executive decision. Oh my gosh, she should have left the singing. She should have left the adult film industry behind and she should have got into gymnastics because the, the amount of gymnastics that I'm watching right now is she's trying to explain what she's done, which was inherently selfish. As she tries to explain that away, it's just astounding. This is Simone Biles, who is right in front of my eyes because <laughs> that <laughs> is crazy, you know? This is a warning to all, and this is men and women, right? Sometimes people get in a relationship with you because there are certain things that they can get out of you. It could be, you know, fame, it could be money, it could be certain status, and you need to be really good at discerning what it is that people want from you when they're in a relationship with you because oftentimes it is not love and long-term commitment. And while love can be conditional, sometimes the conditions involve, I need two houses, I need to maintain this maximal lifestyle that I've, that I've had, you know, that when, when we first met, when you were doing better in the NBA, all these different things. And as soon as you lose those things, which can happen to so many of us in life, then the person dips out and says, I didn't, I didn't sign up for this, which you must keep an eye out for these type of people because they come in all different forms. And that's why you say when you when you're getting married, you usually have in the vows, like for richer or for poorer, you're becoming one entity and you are supposed to work through the things of life together. That's how you grow as people. That's how your relationship grows and deepens by being on the same page by working together, by working through differences, difficult times, sickness, health, poverty, wealth, etc. Uh, that that's just what marriage is all about. So this idea that oh, you didn't make as much money as I thought you would, or you wasted the money that that uh, you made back in the day, or whatever it may be, that doesn't justify you breaking his trust and going out on your own to find this solution. Like that is inherently selfish, and that's you can just hear in the way she's talking. It's like me, me, me. I had to do this. I wanted this. I wanted this lifestyle. And anytime she refers to him, there's never this like track record of we talked about it. Mm -hmm. And then here's what we decided. It's just there's like this massive chasm between them, which I just can't figure out because if he again, if he doesn't learn about the fact that she's on OnlyFans when it's public knowledge for a year, something's wrong. Something's up with this communication here. Right. Uh, but and then with with her, she's making all these big moves and never speaking to him. So there's clearly something highly dysfunctional about this. And the fact that apparently this marriage is not ending in the midst of all this is just to me absolutely mind blowing. I have no idea what's going on it's, here. It's sus, man. It's sus. They, she did say that he's moved out. OK, so there's that. So maybe it is and maybe we got con conflicting reports here, but we're not going to watch the rest of this video. But she goes on to say uh, that he'll come around. And I did what I had to do. That's what she said. I did what I had to do. She had to go and sell her naked body on the internet because that's just what she needed. You know, you know, you know those times when you just have to become a prostitute on the internet? <laughs> have you guys ever been there? 
<laughs> um, probably not. Probably because it's probably not something that you have to do. And if he doesn't come around to it, which I hope he doesn't, more power to him. Because if somebody is willing to disrespect you in this way, it was already a disrespect to, you know, even entertain doing this in the first place. But then to do it and then to not come to him is just times 10, times 100, times 1,000. And film it and put on the internet and go on a podcast? Like, yeah. geez. If you go back to that, I don't know what to tell you at that point. At that point, you've made your bed, you lay in it, you reap what you sow because you are boo-boo the fool. You Put on some clown makeup, okay? Because if you go back to somebody who treats you like that, you're, you're a clown. Clown. Okay. Now, guys, speaking of clown world, here's a video that's gone viral recently. It's got four million views. Do y'all remember in high school, maybe, or college, you might have participated in debates? Uh, we used to do, like, the Socratic method when I was in school, sit in our classroom, and we'd bounce ideas off of each other. If two students disagreed, they'd go back and forth and have a constructive conversation about it. Some even went on to join debate clubs where we facilitate debates that happen over the course of a few hours, and there's pretty strict rules. But... In all, what we're trying to do is understand other people's perspectives, hopefully come to a conclusion. One person ends up winning the debate or one side wins the debate. And, you know, we, we wipe our hands and we go home. Now, there's been a, a super prestigious high school debate tournament that made it to its final round. And this is one of the most prestigious national high school debates uh, that happens. And here we have... Uh, students who have decided to protest in the final round of the debate for trans rights, trans issues, and talk specifically about misgendering. Now, mind you, these, these individuals are our nation's future. They are soon to become adults who are going to bring these ideas and their ideology into their respective workplaces, into their positions of power and leadership. And this is how they handled what should have been a very civil debate. Okay, so welcome to the protest. We are tired of how debate treats trans people. More than that, we are tired of the way that their treatment is normalized, how it is treated as a necessary byproduct of having good discourse. When a nationally ranked team is bold enough to read arguments and make trans people uncomfortable in front of an 11 person panel and not be called out for it, something needs to change. When a trans kid can go three years in debate believing being misgendered was simply something he needed to take in order to win ballot, something needs to change. When almost every trans person quits debate or considers quitting several times a month, several times a week, several times a day, something needs to change. Change. First, the framework. Status quo political discourse remains fixated on the notion of the child, symbol of a future society we must protect, Baden 12. Politicians universally frame their debaters around the question of what policies are best for children, who, keep, who keeps the child safest. Politics, however, supposedly radical, is simply the universal movement of submission to the ideal of the future, to preserve, maintain, and upgrade the structures of society and to proliferate them through for all the sake of the children. It is for this reason queerness finds itself missing from political discourse. Okay. Gosh, could you even follow half of what she was saying? It's just like at this point, it's just leftist ramblings that are being shouted out. But essentially, the argument that she's making here is that in debate, debate is fundamentally, you know, making trans and queer students uncomfortable. They do so through like misgendering, not necessarily acknowledging their identities, talking about different subject matters that could be uncomfortable for trans and queer students. And she is adamantly opposed to this and decides to bring it up during the debate itself where they should in the final round be, you know, really coming to their conclusions and finishing out the competition where, yes, you know, one person or one team or side is deemed the winner. OK, so they decide to hijack this entire thing, which should scare all for the future of, you know, civil discourse in this country. But we're going to skip to uh, the next team taking on their argument. So they get their time to speak and then Team B is supposed to to chime in and Team B decides, you know what, we're just going to defer to uh, to Team A. And we we also we also concur that uh, trans people are getting, you know, acts of violence committed against them in civil debate. Then what this space can be. So I think in light of this, um, Marcus and I have decided to concede the round against Dalton. I think that their message that they've read throughout the entire tournament is incredibly impactful. And by debating it, I don't think we want to undermine the message that they're trying to get across or try to tear down an argument just the sake of picking up a ballot. But 
Rather, I think what's more important is to hold a conversation to discuss their messages and their experiences as well. So in light of everything, we think it's the most important thing in the round is to make sure people have a voice in the first place to get across their message. And there's no greater place to do that than TOC finals. I just want to say thank you to my parents who like encouraged me to start debate in the first place and financing such an expensive event. Is there anyone else who either has ideas or wants to ask questions? You don't have to be trans. It's important to recognize that debate is not about winning an argument. It's about making sure everyone feels okay and making sure everyone feels safe. So BFFR. Debate is not about winning an argument, which we can go back and forth on that. We can say, you know, debate, you could argue debate is not necessarily about winning an argument, but it is about, you know, finding what is true. It is about learning how to think critically and assert your opinions in a way that is persuasive, blah, blah, blah. We can go talk about that all day long. But it's certainly not to like make everyone feel okay all the time and make everyone feel safe at any given moment. In fact, the very structure of debate is so that you sit there and are actively challenged by somebody who disagrees with you and oftentimes fundamentally disagrees with you so that you can feel that challenge, which can oftentimes be uncomfortable. And I, and I guess in today's time, it can oftentimes make you feel unsafe, <laughs> depending on how sensitive you are. But you take on that uncomfortability, you take on the challenge, you take on feeling unsafe, and you construct an argument to combat it. That is what debate is about. So the fact that we have what should be the most intelligent young people who should be engaging in civil discourse and they can't manage to do that because they'd rather protest in the name of trans rights, which is just kind of the ism of the time. Transgenderism is the... the problem that we've all decided we're going to talk about and you know next year it'll be something different or the year after that it'll be something different but my goodness is this oh gosh a sign of lots of trouble to come if these young ones grow into you know adults that carry the same ideology now i can only speak about this you know so much because this is probably exactly what i sounded like as a young person although i was begging other people to engage me on my ideas like nobody wanted to talk politics and i was probably so annoying to every other kid in my class in high school but I would have, you know, made the same assertions about, you know, trans people and black this and race that. And I I feel for them in that way that I know at least some of them are going to grow beyond this point. And I do think they will look back on this moment in their memory and just cringe as I look back on the moments in, in my high school time and cringe at how I acted when it came to just talking about opinions and ideas so there's, there's hope in that sense, but oh my goodness, is this a sad sign for the future of discourse if this continues? Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about free thinking on this show, and what we mean by that is when you are uh, faced with ideas or things that challenge your own point of view, you receive those, you're receptive to them, you weigh them on their merits, you uh, hear the arguments of opposing sides in good faith, and you learn uh, whether or not that doesn't mean you have to change your mind and, and listen to other perspectives and, and uh, internalize them immediately. But it does mean that you hear them out and you have good faith when you come to the table. And what these kids are exemplifying in doing this is saying that there is this sacrosanct ideology that cannot be uh, questioned or cannot, that it's more important than free speech. It's more important than exercising the muscles by which we negotiate differences, uh, the mechanism by which we can come to articulate ourselves and use our speech to make a society that works when you have people, people, people are never going to disagree on things, but when you, that's what we need free speech and the ability to communicate to one another, our ideas to disagree so that we can develop some sort of compromise or, or a consensus and coexist. And they're saying, no, we have this unquestionable thing. So all debate must be shuttered around this topic and everyone needs to accept this point of view. And I was just listening to uh, Joe Rogan had Elon Musk on for Halloween and and he asked uh, Elon why he bought Twitter. And Elon basically said, I was concerned for civilization because the people who were in charge of Twitter were a small group of ide ideologues who were using this uh, super advanced technology to promulgate their ideology that should have been localized to a hyper liberal place like 
uh, San Francisco, Berkeley, California, mm -hmm. that where that ideology should rest. Instead, they were blasting it around the globe and being able to control, to collude with governments, to uh, shut down speech and things that they disagreed with. And when we talk about, you know, my first thought was this looks like the beginning of the you know, grandstanding at high school debate to throwing cake on the Mona Lisa pipeline. But really where this pipeline ends up is these people are the ones who are probably going to go They're They're at the top of their classes. They're in debate. They're going to go to the elite institutions like the Harvards and the Yales. And then they're going to graduate from those. And they're going to go to the elite institutions of our society in academia, in media, in government. And they're going to pull the levers of who's allowed to speak, what sort of messaging goes out, what sort of ideology is promulgated. And we're, we're living in the midst of that right now, which is why free speech is, again, so important, because it's how you call out the illiberalism of people like this, of this type of ideology that shuts it down and becomes authoritarian. So it's it's a silly little story about some, you know, high school students who got too emotional and wanted safe spaces or whatever. But it's really not that silly because where this ends up is somewhere far more sinister. And so I think I'm glad we're talking about it today. Yeah. And you 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 like to think that like, okay, you, you feel this way in high school, you're young, whatever, and you you go to college and then college is where you get a little bit of experience. Somebody challenges you, you know, you get a professor who really like runs at home that you need to open up your mind or whatever. Well, that's not happening anymore in college. So like, where are these people going to go? They're just going to get reinforced for another four years outside of high school and then enter into whatever respective field they, they get into. And that's exactly how we got to where we are today with all of this like woke ideology and some people are just like so bound by it as I used to be that they won't even allow you to have a discussion about it anyways I used to think when I was like you know 16 17 to even have a discussion about race or gender was to concede ground to somebody who is bigoted or racist or transphobic so you tell the people who are trying to challenge your beliefs well I shouldn't even have to debate you because if I debate you that gives your views validity it says that you know you deserve a seat at the table when your disgusting views don't deserve a seat at the table at all. And that seems to be where the brains of these high school students is, that if we even have a debate surrounding an issue that we feel strongly about, it means we're entertaining the ideas of people who we deemed to have been bigots. And that way of thinking is just so harmful, so harmful. And I think underneath that, is not that they actually believe to entertain the conversation is to entertain bigots. It is that they are actually so insecure in the beliefs that they hold that they don't want to be challenged in the first place. When I look back on myself and when I was like super, super defensive about my leftist beliefs and not wanting to have a conversation and saying, I don't talk to racists or bigots, it's because I was scared that they were right. And it was because I was scared that I would have to confront the fact that some of the beliefs that I held in my brain do not sync well with reality. And we can only hope that these high school students go on a journey themselves. And even if they go on that journey and they decide my leftist beliefs are correct and that's where I, I want to stand on issues, that's fine. But allow yourself to be challenged because when you don't allow yourself to be challenged, whether you are left, right or center, you're not really getting anywhere, you know? Uh, at least if you've heard an idea and you dislike it and you still disagree with it, at least you've heard it. At least you have it, you know, in your bank now as something that you can reference and, you know, you have somebody else's perspective that you can speak to. All we wanna do is, you know, understand and be understood. So even if you disagree with somebody, at least you understand where they're coming from now. And hopefully these high school students learn that lesson and the next annual debate they actually have it and just don't like defer to the re and the rambling of leftism. Goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. When I saw that video, I was like, there's so much word salad that it's kind of hard to communicate what's happening. But there is really so much there that shows how our conversation has just completely devolved and it's been destroyed in a lot of ways by sensitivity and coddling and just wokeness in general. It's tragic. You know what else is tragic, guys? <laughs> Yesterday was Halloween. Yesterday was Halloween. And you guys, you you heard me on this show when I was, uh, you know, here on Monday, all, all dressed up and everything. I was like, you know what? I, I do love Halloween and it's fun. In this current age that I'm at, I'm 23, right? I'll get dressed up for Halloween and do the whole show thing. But I don't like going to like Halloween parties or going out because 
it's just like a bunch of people getting drunk and hanging out. My time to shine when it comes to Halloween is when I'm older, when I've got my kids, when I'm taking them trick or treating, when I decorate the house and you got like hundreds of kids coming up, you get them candy bars and all this stuff. But it looks like that dream, I might not be able to manifest that dream. Because this year, I saw, I don't know how many videos of people saying they did the whole thing, they decorated their house, they got in costume, they bought all the candy, and no trick-or-treaters showed up. Now, give me hope, and ho if you had trick-or-treaters show up to your house, drop it in the comments down below. If you didn't, also let me know in the comments down below. Here's a girl talking about exactly that on TikTok. I'm gonna cry, this is like our first year in our house. I have no trick-or-treaters, look. I have all this candy and these freaking packs. That sucks. Now, I think she's just trying to look cute in her costume, let's be honest, but <laughs> if no trick-or-treaters show up to my house, I'm gonna let you know right now, I'm gonna be devastated and I don't know who ruined it. I don't know if it was the people putting, you know, fentanyl and razor blades in the candy or whatever <laughs> that happens every year. I don't know if it was you. I don't know if it was the trunk or treaters that are ruining Halloween trick or treating. But whoever it is, when I catch you, Ricky, when I catch you, <laughs> I'm going to throw hands because this is so upsetting. Here's a video of a little dog that got dressed up in costume and no one showed up. No one showed up to see the French Bulldog in costume waiting to give them candy. This is devastating. This is devastating news. Taylor, you didn't have trick-or-treaters. I didn't. And if you guys have been watching the show, you know I moved from L.A. to Tennessee about a year ago. Wife and I bought a house. We're closer to family. This was all part of the plan. But for me personally, being able to decorate my house for Halloween and have trick-or-treaters has been, I won't say the sole motivation, but a major motivation <laughs> in wanting to own a home. And we finally got to do that. We went all out decorating. I think you guys, some of you guys saw, uh, I did like the Harry Potter clouds that light up with the floating candles on, on my front porch. And we had all kinds of pumpkins and cool stuff going on out there. And I thought, surely that's a very like, you know, flashing beacon to the neighborhood that like come Halloween, this guy's going to have some candy. And I went out and bought four bags of candy. We got a special little like spider web bucket to keep it in. And we were all ready to go. I put on the It's a Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown and we lit a candle. We were like all like excited. I even had uh, my costume ready. I was going to open it up. I was like the, the pizza boy from uh, Home Alone. So I had like a pizza box that he used and I was going to like give kids candy out of the pizza box. It was a whole thing. And literally zero kids came to the door uh, oh for Halloween, gosh. zero. So talk about complete Tragikistan. Um, <laughs> I, I can eat the candy, but I can't sell the house in this market. So I'm left with that. <laughs> Dude, it is one of the main, I don't know, people need to research this. This is one of the major American motivators of buying a home. It is trick or treating, it is decorating <laughs> on Christmas. It is all the things that come along with being a homeowner. And if you've taken that away from us, that joy and that light, what does it even mean anymore? Is this a massive psyop? Is this what it is? <laughs> is this? A lot of you are saying it's the pandemic. I get it, people don't wanna like go house to house and like take other people's candy and food. I think a lot of it is like, can you trust anybody anymore? Who knows what they're gonna put in your candy or like, you know, what the neighbor across the street is doing. We don't even know our neighbors anymore. Like when I was growing up as a kid, I would hang out at my house, hang out at my grandma's house. We knew all of our neighbors. Every time that Christmas came around or Halloween came around, my grandma and me and all my siblings, we would make little baskets with each of our neighbors' names on it. And we would go over to our neighbors and uh, give them candy. And that was just like the thing. Everybody knew each other. If you needed sugar or a lemon or whatever, you go next door and you ask the neighbors. You can't do that anymore. I had, okay, I'll tell this story actually. A neighbor knocked on my door yesterday and John goes and opens the door and my neighbor's there. And I will say, this is a little bit, I guess this is antithetical to what I'm saying, but he brought us chocolates and he gave us like two little candy bars and said, you know, happy Halloween. We got this, we got this for you guys. Um, and 
that was super nice. And I was honestly shocked because you just never hear about that happening. You barely know your neighbors anymore. A lot of us are living especially in, in like, LA. especially in LA. Like it's unheard of to like know who your neighbors are in LA. And get the chocolates were Jeremy's chocolates, by the way, which is so funny. So obviously the neighbors are, are based because they had brought us like the he him bar for John and the she her bar for me. Um, so super based neighbors. And that's exactly it. You know, the neighbors who do bring you chocolate they're bringing you the based conservative candy because we're the only ones who care about, about knowing your neighbors in this economy. <laughs> yeah, I was the thought crossed my mind today when we were when I knew we were going to talk about this. There needs to be like a Buddy the Elf, but for Halloween kind of movie because we had everyone losing their Christmas spirit, and Buddy the Elf came and said the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. And they have this great story where everyone gets inspired and remembers and gets their Christmas spirit back. Everyone's lost their Halloween spirit. Nobody cares about Halloween anymore. And you're right. I I think the the pandemic obviously there's probably some residual like safetyism going on. And just yeah. a general like lowering the bar of trust and everything. But I also think that there's kind of been a general erosion in our culture of just that like social cohesion, that that sense of community that comes with being like in your neighborhood and feeling like I want to do something for my neighbors. I want to be a part of this community like that's just dwindling, it seems, in in our time. And the fact that the only people who are participating in your apartment building were apparently people of the conservative disposition. I mean, I was one of the most decorated houses in our little subdivision. Uh, so maybe that tells you something about it. But I, I worry that maybe we're, we're losing a little bit of this tradition. And it's really sad. I think we need a, a buddy the elf to, to bring it back. Dude, our world is literally going colorless. It's crazy. I was watching Corpse Bride, uh, which I said is on my, my list of Halloween films, right? And there's this interesting like juxtaposition in the film, because for those of you who are unfamiliar in Corpse Bride, there is like the living world and there is the dead world in this movie. And the living world is absolutely colorless. It's like gray and blue and dreary and they go into the world of the dead and it's like all lit up and people are playing music and everything like that. I'm like, why is this becoming a reflection of our actual world? Like all of the architecture looks the same. Nobody decorates for Halloween or Christmas anymore. Or like neighbors don't know each other. Nobody's trick or treating or like doing anything fun or cool. When I see people who are like doing cool things, I'm like, wow, that's so rare these days. Like, could you imagine inviting your neighbors over for dinner? I bet a lot of you could not imagine like just like inviting the people next door over for dinner and having them like sit at your table or having like a housewarming party when you move into a new neighborhood where you invite the neighbors and like, you know, grill and cook food for them. That literally astounds me. As a kid, I used to like drive around with my grandmother, not me driving, she was driving, but we would look at all the different houses and all the houses would compete for like who's decorated the best. There was even this one house that would pay, they were so rich, they paid a radio station and to like sync up their their lights to to the radio station and to play certain music and you would go and the lights on their house would sync up with the radio as you're driving by and where where is that okay where is that american ingenuity <laughs> I could clearly rant about this forever. Uh, I'm not going to continue, but you guys know how I feel about this. We're going to start a movement on this channel where, you know, we'll, we'll create our own community of people who are adherent to holiday traditions so that they do not die. Because if trick-or-treating is dead by the time I have kids in a house, I'm going to be so devastated. This is going to be, this is the hill I will die on. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to bring it back. And if it doesn't come back, we're all just going to move to the same neighborhood. And uh, we'll just do it in our neighborhood. And we'll be the... The, the coolest neighborhood in, in town. That's my goal. I'm here for it. <laughs> Taylor's here for it. Now, speaking of Halloween, we'll finish up with a little bit of Halloween news here and just updates. Every year we have the Halloween white face, black face argument. And this young woman by the name of Quen, Quenlyn Blackwell, who's actually a pretty famous influencer. Many of you may have or may have not seen her before. She dressed up as Mr. Clean. And she, of course, is a black woman. OK, so she painted her face white and did, you know, this whole Mr. Clean outfit. I think it's hilarious. I think it's funny. I think it's a free for all on Halloween and you should be able to do whatever you want. But of course, people came after and said, you know, if white people did the same thing with a black character, this would not be okay. And of course, that is a very fair argument to make. If you saw a white person do this, as we've seen in the past, uh, with just for instance, Julianne Huff. Julianne Huff decided to dress up as Crazy Eyes from Orange is the New Black, which is a black character, and put on brown foundation. Did not go over well, let me tell you that, okay? When Kim Kardashian put braids in her hair for a separate occasion, 
that was not okay. We see the, the same thing with headdresses and all this different stuff. So Quinlan decided to respond. Here's her response. This year for Halloween, I will be turning into a white man because I think white face is hilarious. And to the Republicans saying, if you can do it, why can't we? Go ahead. Let's see who loses their job first. Reparations. This year for Halloween. So the quiet part was said out loud. She said, go ahead. Let's see who loses their job first. Reparations. Uh, and that, that is true. You know, if, if I do whiteface and Taylor does blackface and we appear on the same show, I don't think anybody's going to be upset at me. Uh, I think a whole lot of people are going to be upset at Taylor. <laughs> So we this have no plans. True. We have no plans of doing that. Um, but yes, I think Taylor, Taylor would be the one to be in trouble if that were, to, were the case. Yeah, absolutely. And I get it. Like there's the history of like the minstrel show and the mockery and all that. But as we've said a million times that this, this comes up, like as long as there's no intent to disparage or mock, like who cares? It's innocent fun. And that's great. And uh, we did a poll in here. White people, are you offended by black people dressing up as white people? 76% of you say no. 5% say yes. The rest are non-white. So there you go. Uh, and then, you know, of course, we had our own example of a white person apparently doing this and being chastised for it. I'm going to find the photos here. This is uh, Khloe Kardashian dressed up as a, a Bratz doll. Now, when I saw this video, nothing came to mind except for who the hell is that? Because that does not look like Khloe Kardashian. I feel like every single time I see a photo of Khloe Kardashian, she's like one of those, you know, those old like Animorph books that you'd get from the, the school library where it's like a human <laughs> turning into a fish or a bear or a cat or whatever. That's how I feel about Khloe Kardashian, because I swear her face is never the same. Like, you know, you never step in the same river twice. Khloe Kardashian's face is never the same twice. I swear to God. Okay. So this picture goes up and they're like, okay, she looks like a Bratz doll. I mean, it's a pretty good costume. It's pretty accurate. People are upset and now they're now accusing her of black fishing. And for those of you who don't know what black fishing is, it's like catfishing when you pretend to be somebody else, but you're pretending to be black. And that's what they're accusing uh, Miss Khloe Kardashian of. To that, get a life. Get a life. Okay. Do you notice how like people who who have lives are like never worrying about all this stuff and never talking about it in, in this sense and never making these like completely baseless, unfounded accusations towards other people? Just come on. Halloween is meant to be fun. She didn't dress up as a, a Bratz doll to appropriate black culture or to do some sort of minstrel show or to make fun of black people in any way, shape, or form. If anything, she dressed up like a Bratz doll because she thought it was cute and endearing and attractive, which is all that the Kardashians are after. So if this even was blackface, which I am not granting that it is, it would be blackface out of admiration and thinking that it is beautiful. So just make it make sense. The math isn't mathing. Boo, tomato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> I wanted to read from the article that Perez Hilton uh, put out about this. He had a quote from some people who on the same lines were critical of Kylie Jenner having a Bratz doll modeled after her and said, giving Kylie a white woman who modeled her face slash body around black women her own Bratz doll, which is arguably a more urban black slash black presenting doll before an actual black woman is weird God. how do you react to something like that do you think that they're appropriating black women's faces and bodies no i'm like and, and since when is the brats doll known to be a, a black doll it's just not the truth whatsoever and why would you say that what is it about brats doll that you think makes them black the only thing i could think of that somebody would say that about a brats doll is that they have big lips maybe so are you you know are you saying that that's what makes black uh, the Bratz dolls inherently black? I grew up with Bratz dolls. I grew up watching Bratz. They come in all different colors and, you know, they have their own little separate personalities, whatever. I'm sure many of the girls who are watching this show right now grew up watching the Bratz movies and they're all different colors. So it was never sold to us as like, this is the doll of the black race. People, I think, will just find a way to be outraged by anything again it's like that game can we make it racist but people are playing it in reality like in real life this is real life this is these are real stories <laughs> it's like true crime these are real stories these are based on true events and it's just sad just move on she's not black fishing 
She's just dressing up. She's fishing something. As I said, her face changes every two seconds, but it's not black fishing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, lastly, we ha- we're going to play a little uh, good versus bad on Halloween. Here's a video that's just going all over the Internet of, you know, a family, it seems, coming up to one of those candy bowls where it's, you know, take one. As some people do, they leave the candy bowl out and they hope uh, that in- that there's going to be some sort of honor system where somebody takes one candy and they move about their business so that everybody else can have a little bit. Here's what this family decided to do. <laughs> Just clean them out. Cleaned them out. Even had the audacity to go back and look in the bowl to make sure that they didn't forget anything. Are you? (laughs) Some people. Some people. Just. Straight to jail. Yeah, it's straight to jail. Straight to jail, honestly. <laughs> Do not collect $200. And, and then we'll juxtapose that with, you know, the goodness. Not all, not all are bad. Not all are trying to commit such egregious acts on uh, such a day as Halloween. Here we go. <laughs> Aww, that was really nice, Jackson. That's all right. We're next kids. There you go. Then you're like, no, I want that one. (laughs) That was really nice, Jackson. (laughs) Jackson deserves all the candy in the world. Jackson deserves all the candy that that family just stole from that bowl outside that person's house because Jackson has a kind heart. He saw that there was no more candy for the other kids that would be coming around the block and he said, let me give them some of mine. Oh my gosh, Jackson for That's president. what we're talking about with the Halloween spirit. That's <laughs> yes. exactly what we're talking about. And this kid is like Santa's little helper on Christmas. He's just make, spreading the cheer for all to have. Oh my gosh, he's, when he goes, oh no, as if it's like the worst thing in the world that there's no candy in that bowl. <laughs> Oh, oh it's so sweet. Oh, my gosh. And on that very cute, adorable note, uh, we are going to get into Super Chats, guys. <laughs> All right. I was we about love to say, get him on the Ellen show or something. But do they still have the Ellen show? I think she's no, retired, I think she's right? done. I think she's done. I don't know where, where he goes from, from here. Maybe there's another show, the Jennifer Hudson show or the, the Kelly Clarkson show. These are the new ones on the block. Drew. Or the Drew Barrymore, so she can just get on the carpet and yeah, grovel. Get on their knees. <laughs> yes, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, and those other people should be shame, shame. Oh, shamed, shame. Walk we need you to the walk of shame from Game of Thrones. <laughs> All right, our first super chat today is from Right Leaning RLL. It says, my body, my choice. What a great response to your husband after he finds out you put yourself online explicitly. I can tell the relationship is super healthy with the secret OnlyFans and recording. Yeah, that's just all over the place. What a what a tragic turn of events for their seemingly always dysfunctional relationship, but more dysfunctional than ever now. So that my dude says, if my significant other had a secret OnlyFans, I would be incensed beyond belief. Only thing that would be worse is if she were a secret 1975, 1975 fan. fan. <laughs> How did I know Knew that it. that was the case? Uh, yeah, no, I don't know what I, what I would do. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to imagine like being a woman in that position and finding out that your boyfriend or your, your husband has a secret OnlyFans. <laughs> First of all, I don't know. I would just be like, who is buying that? It's almost worse. It's almost worse. Yeah, I think it'd worse. be more like finding out your husband is is buying OnlyFans yeah, from people or yeah. subscribing or whatever. Um, get one two three says, "LOL, what problems did she have that required getting an OnlyFans to solve?" I can't believe she said that. Yeah, she couldn't afford Dom, so she had to start, you know, slutting it out on the internet. My goodness, tragic. 
Cheesecake Bro says, hey there, gang. First rule of red pill. Never, ever marry or date a 304 with a 304 pass because it will come back to bite you later. Not worth it, man. BFFR. I don't know that it always will, but at least in, in this scenario, it uh, it most definitely did. And it came back with a vengeance, I will say. So, I mean, it, it is some sort of risk assessment you got to do there. Poor guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's one thing to, like, have some kind of past. It's another thing to, like, fail to change if you are entering into a commitment to do that. Like, clearly there was no character change. There was no actual, like, uh, yeah, transformation that happened in this person's heart or life um, after being married such that they could stay with their commitment that they made in marriage. Yeah. And so it's not that you can't ever be in a relationship with someone with the past, but mm -hmm. it's going to be, it's a bigger hurdle to overcome for sure. Yep. Uh, Abigail Schultz says she never clearly, or she's clearly never been in the married mindset because what she did, what she wanted to without consulting him. Amen. Um, uh, making a video during a private argument is absolutely wild with any normal person's opinion. Yeah, it's crazy. That's psychotic, man. And I think there's going to be a lot more of that as the internet, you know, evolves into whatever it is that it's becoming people just filming all the outrageous moments in their lives and putting it out there for others to view. And that's why society is declining and why nobody trick-or-treats on Halloween anymore because mm -hmm. everyone's too much on the internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alex Lesher says, just thought I'd share I'm going to a convention this weekend, Twin Cities Con in Minnesota. Ooh, oh, that's my, my hometown, my birth town, hey. St. Paul, Minnesota. Minnesota Vikings. Tough, <laughs> tough week for my Vikings. We lost our, our quarterback. I'm actually going to the Vikings game this weekend in Atlanta, um, which is much less exciting now that... We're starting a backup, but yeah. alas. Uh, in Perceptions says, I have been binging your content all week. Used to be a leftist mm -hmm. Canadian here. Not sure how much you've seen, but it's truly terrifying here now. Yes, I've I've heard many a story of the old of the old Canadians. Sorry about that. <laughs> we feel very sorry for you guys. Yeah. The Canadian government is basically those kids on the Zoom call, but that's everyone in Parliament. And <laughs> That's what happens when they grow up, baby. That's what happens. Uh, oh, but we, it's a collective struggle. Uh, wherever you are in the world, I think we're all dealing with some sort of degree uh, of, of whatever we call Different this. Uh, yeah, sending good vibes. Um, Cheesecake Bro again says, that old hag is tired of living minimally. And she said, I'm not sorry for what I'm doing. I'm sorry that he can't understand it. I mean, that is a red flag. It is <laughs> It's aggressive huge. calling her a hag. And he says, uh, from the streets you came and to the streets you shall return. Send her, Amala. <laughs> I think she's sending herself, honestly. Literally. Oh, uh, that's a good one. BJ Lucas says, first live stream, Canadian here, and I finally managed to get on to watch you live. Just awesome. wanted to say that I absolutely love you, your stream, Amala Aww, and Taylor. Thank you so much. We're happy to have you. All the Canadians coming out today. I know. I love that. Canadians are extremely nice. Yes. They're like... So strangely agree. nice mm -hmm. but not not in a bad way um bad anisha way. says hi guys happy wednesday small confession watching all these crazy stories makes me feel really normal despite my battles with mental health issues and i secretly pat myself on the back for it you know what that is one of the silver linings of some of these stories which is what i was telling you guys about with like watching dating reality tv shows because whenever i watch them with my boyfriend we're like oh my gosh okay so we are uh, this is just a litmus test for you know where we're at in our relationship we're doing really good <laughs> if this is if this is what normalcy looks like in in other people's relationships so i don't know how good that is to like bank your your feelings on the crazy stories that you hear but it is just a natural human phenomenon i forget there's a word for that it's some weird uh it's a, it's a strange word there's a word for doing that yeah. if you know it in the chat i don't know it, it, it will come the tip of my tongue uh, let's see, Anisha, oh, we just read Anisha, thank you. Uh, Cheesecake Bro again says, I, so I've started talking to someone who seemingly has nothing wrong with her, likes Italian, listen uh, to cook, watch sports, work out, basically no red flags. Is that a red flag in and of itself? She's Latina, by the way. <laughs> it's not a red flag until there is a red flag. You just got to wait, give it time. Give it time. All mm -hmm. things come out with time. So you just... Keep on the track that you're going. Bask in the, the gloriousness of there being no red flags yet. And hopefully none ever come. But as we all know, relationships have their ups and downs. So, 
A yellow time. light. Proceed Proceed with caution. Indeed. Uh, schadenfreude, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, maybe that is what I was looking for. Isn't that... Isn't like that delighting uh, in the demise of others? Yeah, or, I don't want to say yeah. I'm delighting in it, but at least it's like, a, oh, okay, we're, we're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing yeah. all right. Uh, Oatmeal says, I went trick-or-treating with my friends and our little siblings and friends bag broke in front of a policeman's car. I went as Cartman. You went as Cartman. Oh, that's an awesome costume. I bet. I, I love Race walk Cartman. Cartman or regular Cartman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's diverse women. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's funny. That reminds me of like Kevin McAllister when his uh, grocery bags break oh, on his walk home from the grocery store. I can't wait for Home Alone so, season. Uh, I can't that wait. Time. Do you yeah, guys... How do y'all feel about the whole November 1st debate? Like, is November right. 1st too early for Christmas music? Do you need to wait until... Uh, I saw Mariah Carey posted a video already, like of her them like uh, knocking her out of like an ice block, and she comes out and that. starts singing. It's yeah, hilarious. I but, I'm oh, like I need to make a poll. I'll make a poll. I give a little cool. space for for Thanksgiving and like those just general fall feelings, you know, like the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving special and stuff like that. You got to make a little bit of room, uh, but not much because you got to get in that Christmas time, especially with how little our society is celebrating things these days i am i take it very very seriously and i'll take it even more serious when i have kids even if the rest of the world is not celebrating these holidays when my my kids are here i'm gonna make it seem as if they are <laughs> i'm gonna gaslight my kids into thinking that the whole <laughs> world also has these traditions i'm usually team november 1st that's kind of my mom was like that growing up but mm -hmm. uh this year, I'm like, you know, I'm so I think I'm so bummed by the the lack of Halloween spirit that I'm like, I'm gonna give it a little space and and you know, ramp up to the to Blink the Christmas your wounds. stuff. Yeah. I need to detox for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I have a poorly worded poll up by the way. When is Christmas music okay to start listening to? Mm -hmm. Should be when is it okay to start listening to Christmas music? That's okay. So far, it looks like 62% say after Thanksgiving, 24% are November 1st. So it's just a loud vocal. Haters. Yeah. It's really a sizable chunk of the population is okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, rock, paper, scissors. How do we not have Tragikistan merch yet? Uh, we didn't have a single trick or treater either, Taylor. My son was so bummed. Yeah, maybe we'll work. Uh, I'm from Tragikistan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe that is merch that we need. Oh my gosh. I don't even know where I got that word from or why I started saying it, but uh, it's, it's stuck around. It's been around for years now at this point. Mm hmm. For those of you who don't know, Tragikistan is what you say when something tragic has happened or you have, you know, read a tragic story. Tragikistan. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's a play on the country of Tajik, Tajikistan. You know Tajikistan? what? Yeah. If you say it is, that's what it is. <laughs> Gotta be. It's, that's, it's so close. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Joshua DeNoyer says, keep your hopes up. Amala I had tons of trick-or-treaters this year and about two last year. Our crazy world will balance out as it always okay, does. Okay, good. That, uh, you know, that gives me a little bit of hope. I'm going to like yeah. be talking to realtors when I'm looking for a house and be like, so what's the trick or treating situation <laughs> yeah. like here? <laughs> They're going to think I'm like a on creep. Zillow for them to add that on the Zillow listings on the website. So, like trick or treaters. Yes. Just how many kids do you have living in this neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be on like a watch list somewhere. Oh uh, my gosh. Le Liz Liv Levac says, uh, Halloween is my most favorite holiday and I refuse to let it disappear. Faithful Halloween supporter. Yep. Okay, here, here. good, good. Join the club, man. <laughs> Stephanie Fonseca says, it's the trunk or treat station's fault. I'm 26 and the only reason I don't go out is because I'm in crutches, still dressed as the other mother to hand <gasps> out candy. I love that for you. The other mother is such a great costume idea. For those of you who don't know, that's from the movie Coraline, uh, which is a fantastic choice. Yeah, a lot of people I saw on the internet were blaming trunk or treaters because they're like setting up these not on a school night, safe, like let your kids come in the costume and get the candy from the trunk instead of doing it the fun way, okay? <laughs> and then they ruin it for the people who want to do the old fashioned way. I grew up doing both. Like my church would put on, like, I think on the weekend, they would put on an event like a, they called it Hallelujah Night or Fall Fest or whatever. And you'd go as your costume and then they'd have all these stations of the bobbing mm. for apples and all the cool stuff you can do. And you go through all of them and you leave with like a whole pillowcase full of candy. That's what we used to take. <laughs> and then you could still go out on Halloween night and trick or treat. So best of both worlds. So I'm like, bring that back. I know. 
uh, kids these days. <laughs> uh, let's see. Right leaning RLL says, um, honestly, moving into a house made me like Halloween less. My neighborhood gets so clogged with cars. It took me one hour to go from the entry main street to my house. Literally half a mile max. Because there's so many people out and about. Is that what uh, you're saying? Yeah, apparently. Hey, that's the burden we bear as a society <laughs> that wants fun. It's funny because I feel like you have like the parents and maybe a lot of millennial parents were like, oh, we need to make sure everything's safe. Let's do trunk or treat instead of trick or treating. And then we're like, get out there, kids. We're going till midnight. We're going to trick or treat or whatever. And we don't care if it's a school night. I think we're going to be an opposite pendulum swing when it comes to this generation uh, growing up and, and becoming parents. No more coddling. Lord Geotron says, what does it mean to dress like a white person? Well, it means that you no longer look black or brown or whatever it is that you are. You look white. Like if I put on white foundation, straighten my hair a little bit, maybe I could fool you guys. Maybe next year. Maybe that's next Halloween. I'll lend you my New Balance sneakers. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll do white face. Taylor does black face, guys. Vote down uh, below. <laughs> that be our last show on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Subscribe on Rumble. So we're going out with a bang. <laughs> Uh, Riku Forever says, I'm sorry you guys didn't have people come to come over, but I totally get it. Get that with knowing your neighbors. I still know my neighbors from childhood. Yeah, I'm like, we got one piece of chocolate from our neighbors and we're like, we need to have them over for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. Uh, uh, Starved for human connection, I guess, out here in this uh, big old city. I guess my, at my wife's behest, I went to our for annual HOA meeting because uh -huh. my, my neighborhood has an HOA, which was like the most adult thing I've ever done. And I thought it was going to be super boring. But you know what? It Even though it was about like roof insurance and fixing the gate and having, you know, oh, that light post went out. When is that getting replaced? And just dumb stuff like that. It's like, these are the people I share the same space. I occupy the same few blocks mm -hmm. of, of uh, you know, suburban Tennessee with. And uh, there was something about that shared experience that they have a stake in it and it's like a microcosm of society it's like you guys have to come together there's a pool of money you elect people uh that are, have to make decisions you have to weigh in and represent yourself it's a very like interesting thing so you can throw your hands up and then but then when you complain uh you didn't voice your opinions you didn't do anything about it you weren't present so you know tough luck but uh anyways this is i'm adulting. all about the, the community now all about the hoa <laughs> bring it back well, just more like feeling connection to the people around you, you know it's like it's, yeah it's, I have a greater appreciation for that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, Madian Hart Hadar says, uh, of all bad TV shows, the worst was Shameless. It had the most frustrating, annoying, unbearable characters ever. What's the worst TV show you ever saw? Ooh, worst TV show I ever saw? <laughs> suits. Hate Suits. I think that's, that <laughs> really? TV show. I never the watched worst. it. People really love Suits. It was like trending on Netflix when they added it on it. I tried to watch it. My boyfriend and I were watching it. I could not, I could not stomach the writing and it's just so bad to me that I don't understand. And maybe that's a hot take because a lot of people love suits, but that show, eh, womp, <laughs> tomato, womp. tomato, tomato. <laughs> I tried watching that, um, that like Operation Lioness show or whatever. It's got like Nicole Kidman and mm. Zoe Saldana or someone like that. And it's like a, they're CIA agents, but this like women unit and stuff. And Heck I yeah. was like trying to be open minded and everything. Not that, you know, cringe, cliche, right leaning person. I was like, yeah, I'm going to give this a shot. And I got like halfway through the first episode. And I'm like, man, I can't do it. It's, it's, it's not it. It's just no subtlety. Just kind of too much girl bossing and all this stuff. I just maybe I don't know. Y'all tell me if I'm wrong, but I didn't like that girl one. Girl boss too close to the sun. And the live action Halo show by Paramount. Mm -hmm. As a somebody who's been playing Halo since the first one. I was fight, excited to see they made it a show and they just no bueno. completely just destroyed it and wokeified it. And anyway, so those are my candidates. Uh uh, Sandra Allen says, as a mama, Jackson made me want to cry. What a sweetheart. Also, thank you both for putting in so much work to make the show sensible and funny. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I know. You see these videos of little kids and you're just like, I can only hope that my child turns out to be, you know, half as good as a kid that just naturally does that. And I think kids just have that natural propensity and they kind of get that kindness, like beaten out of them with all the different things that happen in their lives. But oh my gosh, if my kid can maintain that sense of just like 
just rightness and wanting to do something good for other people, man. You've really won as a parent. Go Jackson. Go Jackson. <laughs> yeah, says growing up in Australia, uh, I didn't see a lot of trick or treating, but it has become more popular after the COVID years. Thanks for all the hard work. That's interesting. Ah, interesting. I wonder what that is. If that's just like American influence going over there or what the what the deal is. You guys got released from your quarantine camps and now all of a sudden everyone appreciates freedom. <laughs> I'm just now kidding. you're like you're gonna take kidding. on all the different <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone so said funny. Vegemite candy is not it. Vegemite candy. <laughs> yeah here's a blooming onion for you. <laughs> Shrimp on the Bobby. It's just the kidding. most, yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Anyways, love you guys from Australia. Sorry. Love you guys. Uh, Risky says, uh, hey guys, will you be celebrating the Day of the Dead? I've never celebrated that before, but you know what? I'm open to it. I'm open to it. You know what? I, I want all the holidays now that my holidays are getting trampled. Okay. Just bring me more every day. I'm, I'm going to be celebrating. You know how like every day has like a national donut day or like national boyfriend day or whatever. I'm just going to be taking them all on. Even, yeah, even I, national I, pronoun I, that, day. That, Year of the Halloween party at my house, I was like a Day of the Dead guy. Remember that? That's true. We, we are, you we're all painting makeup. you as a skull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, Taylor so. loves skulls, like, and especially the little, like, uh, the sugar mm -hmm. skulls and sugar stuff. Sugar skulls and stuff. So that's when his day. When I was day. in Mexico for a volleyball tournament in Rosarito, I uh, bought from a street vendor, like a Minnesota Vikings sugar skull. Actually, it's behind me right there. I don't know if you can see oh, it. Oh, I don't but, think we uh, can. Yeah. Uh, well, Tragic. here, let me grab it. Grab it. Take your time. We've got all the time in the world. See this guy? <laughs> boom. Yeah, boom. Nice. That's from like a Mexican street vendor in uh, in Rosarito. So, so true we're fan. already celebrating in our own little way. But no, I haven't actually celebrated like the Adelos Martins. No. <laughs> After all that. Uh, okay. Um, Fifi Gigantor said, death of holiday spirit is directly related to degradation of society by queer slash commie agenda. Uh, people are afraid to misgender. Whoa. Imagine outrage of micro costume. Wait. Or miss costume. Not micro -costume. Read the first sentence again. I always do this. I'm so, so sorry. The death of holiday spirit is directly related to the degradation of society uh, by queer slash commie agenda. Is it? People are afraid to misgender. Imagine the outrage of miscostume. Yes, I don't know. I just think it's like apathy at this point. I don't know. I think it's just general apathy towards holidays and people like, I don't know. They've just lost their, their I think drive. There's a, you know, like Yuri Besmanov, I think there's an element of demoralization. Like you no longer feel like you're participating in a culture that is brought together by a sense mm -hmm. of shared identity as Americans sure. and shared values and everything. The holidays being part of that whole yeah. And when that is eroded or undermined uh, by an ideology that makes everything about identity and everything, then there's, you know, there is an apathy because you're like, what's even the point? I'm not proud to be American. Look at all this crap that everyone's doing. And right. every, you know, it's like it's demoralizing. So I think there's something to that. Um, well, if, if that's what you mean, to the extent that that's what you mean by a queer slash commie agenda, <laughs> <laughs> destroying and undermining society, uh, I kind of agree, maybe agree with some of that. But yeah. Anyways, uh, Lisa Le Levac again says, thank you, Taylor, for saying my name perfectly. OK, well, I stumbled both times, but I'm glad we, but we were got close. there. <laughs> and then she said, sorry, I spelled your name wrong with another <laughs> super chat because she said Taylor. Um, it's feels all good. Like I'm back it's in all good. Panama. Uh, Cassie says, I want some advice. I live alone on a hundred acres of land, uh, as a 19 year old girl, besides carrying a gun on me, what advice do you have to help me feel safe? First of all, congratulations, a hundred acres of land. You're 19 and you're just chilling, but you're a woman chilling by yourself. Is that what Cassie? Is that his name? Sounds like it. Yeah. That's my dream. Well, not to live alone on a hundred acres, but that is my dream to have like that much land. Um, what is my advice to you? I don't know what I can say. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I th it seems like you're already doing what it is that you, you need to be doing. I don't know if you're dating or looking for a husband or anything, but that's a that's a tried and true way to get a little bit more company and protection. But you're 19, so take your time. Don't 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 rush because I just <laughs> I just said that. It's internalized uh, misogyny talking, Amala. <laughs> you don't that's need exactly no man to protect you. No, I mean, being armed is good. I would like maybe reach out to your local. Uh, law enforcement yep. and establish a relationship good idea. and make sure that you have a good connection with them. And I'm sure they'd be more than happy to like give you a way to 
you know, contact them. Uh, the chat more, is more saying uh, two big dogs. That's another yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, dogs are just like dogs will ward off a lot of you know uh, people with ill intent. Get some two big dogs that are trainable or already trained. It's yeah, probably a good that's, good idea. That's good too. Cameras like ring camera, maybe at the front of your property, the entrance of it, so you know what's going on. Yeah. What's that app that everyone's on to know what's going on in their area? Oh, there's I mean, citizen. Acres, that's there's a citizen. There's citizen, and then I have I have a ring camera, so like there's ring yeah. too. Ring will alert you to what's happening in your mm -hmm. area. Yeah, the but dogs is a good one too. Dogs will they'll love the land too. So mm. yeah. So hopefully there that helps. You go, but kudos for yeah holding it yeah, down to hundred acres. That's I mean, awesome. That, <laughs> Are you yeah. kidding? Goals, um, homesteading goals, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kiara Zier says, as a fellow Halloween enthusiast, Halloween on a weekday didn't help this year. I mm. visited, partied in Wybor on Saturday in Tampa with some friends, and it was way busier than yesterday here in Fort, Fort Myers. Yeah, I guess there's a whole like, oh, it's a school night or I have work tomorrow or whatever. Guys, it's one day. You have one life. Live it up. What the heck? What happened? What happened to YOLO? <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> it's dying. Yeah. Um, Bullet Shepherd says, The Lion, the Witch, and the Audacity of this <laughs> Beach. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Literally B-E-E-C-H. Uh, that's funny. Uh, and I think that's our last one. Oh, my today. gosh. A funny note to end on. Guys, thank you so much for watching the show today. Hope you had a fun time. Drop down your thoughts on the different stories that we covered. Black fishing, doing whiteface on Halloween, Halloween wrongdoers and right doers. The woman who uh, hid, kind of, in OnlyFans from her husband. And, of course, the national debate between these high schoolers that just devolved into madness. I'd love to hear from you guys. As always, if you disagree with me, do get out, but do so respectfully. And if you like this stream and had a little bit of fun, like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time we're live. That's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. And we post videos for you guys every day. Tomorrow's video is about a man who goes around getting people to misgender him, films them, and posts it on the internet. It's a great, great, fun one. Can't wait for you to see it. So stick around and then we'll see you tomorrow. Guys, have a fantastic rest of your Wednesday.